Hello, I'm Lee Hirschberger with Brimstone Fire Protection. I just thought that it would be nice maybe to do a quick video from an informal perspective and just walk you through our products, maybe walk you through a little bit of what we've learned along the way, um, realizing that, that you know, EV fires are, you know, people are nervous and rightfully so, uh, but, but we've learned that, that you can tame the beast, that it's not the, it doesn't have to be the monster that, that everybody makes it out to be. And, and really, I guess I'll probably start this by maybe dispelling some of the illusion um, you know, I mean, I, I'll, I'll straight out just tell you that first and foremost, free oxygen is your enemy in an EV event. I mean, that is going to be the difference. That'll be the difference between night and day if you use a blanket uh, versus a, a, just a water response or a no response at all. Um, what we learned in the third party facility that we use, it's a, it's a facility that's run by a 30 year firefighter and, and other firefighters that, that work with him. Um, they, they did a series of tests for us. We did seven, three S module or S model tests, uh, equaling almost 16 kilowatt hours in a, in a, a Tesla S bed. Uh, and, um, um, we learned a lot. I mean, and one of those things is, is during our baseline tests, we did tests with no response. So just the, the, the batteries going crazy by themselves. Uh, we did a couple tests with blanket only response, and then we did a couple tests with blanket and our water mister response. And so uh, we've got really great data. We had thermal couples all over the place. I mean, so we can see the heating, we can see the cooling as it as it would uh, work its way across um, during our tests. But uh, the, the the really fun and exciting tests were the first ones that we did where we had uh, no response. And so um, we actually, because it was a free oxygen event, there was nothing happening. And everybody wants to tell you that a thermal runaway, I mean, you know, on, on any level, whether it's EV or otherwise, is its own uh, uh, fire triangle. And, and that's true, but there is a caveat. There's only enough oxygen in the cathode to continue the event on a cell to cell level. So in other words, you're not gonna have this wild flaming event, explosions and gas jets shooting out the side if you can get rid of the free oxygen. Free oxygen is absolutely 100% your enemy. And so, um, um, you know, it, it, it's still going to potentially be an event underneath the blanket, but it won't be a, a wild show. And I mean, you may actually end up having uh, uh, vapor cloud ignitions under the blanket, but we've learned that even the vapor cloud ignitions, I mean, our firefighters, they were, we were all very nervous to start with. I mean, we didn't know what to expect. Uh, you know, we took every precaution we could, so we know we were safe, but it was still you know, we were trepidatious and, and rightly, you know, rightfully so. But by the end of all of our testing, I, I feel like, you know, Chris, our facility director, especially, who is a great firefighter. In fact, he, he actually, I paid his way to FDI, he, FDIC. He believes in our product so much. He actually came and worked our booth uh, with us for a couple of days. So, uh, but that, that's a side note. Um, um, anyway, so what we learned is that by getting rid of the oxygen, it is a you know an entirely different event. It's very very tameable. Those vapor cloud ignitions that we did experience, um, without the mister going, it was it was a little bit more rough, I would say. But you know the, the blanket would it wasn't scary. Now obviously if you're in an enclosed space, you know anytime there's the pot potential for for uh, pressure to build, uh, you know like garage doors blowing off. Obviously, I mean the idea is to get it out of that enclosed space as quickly as possible. Cover it first, get it out of that space. But if it's not in an enclosed space, the blanket would lift, it would burp the flames and smoke out the side, out of the side, and then the blanket would settle right back down. And again, once that seal was recreated, the flames would go away. We never had flames uh, with the blanket. Uh, we never had flames that would be longer. I mean, we had flaming underneath the blanket no more than 80 seconds. In fact, one of the tests we did within 20 seconds, the flaming was gone. And we, in our test, you'll see on our website that we use some metal racks to simulate the free oxygen that you may find in the cabin of a vehicle. Because if we had put the blankets directly on the modules, the fire would have been over just like that. So we wanted, we wanted to simulate real world. We wanted to have free oxygen involved because that's really, that's really what feeds the monster. So, um, yeah, during our tests, it was, it was pretty wild. Um, the, the, the big difference is, is that because when you have free oxygen, it's the flames are much more intense, much hotter. The aluminum bottom, which all EVs come with aluminum bottoms. What ends up happening though, is that the fire gets so intense when there's free oxygen that that aluminum melts away 
so fast that the batteries actually drop out before they've gone into the thermal runaway. So now what you have are a bunch of little ticking time bombs because they've dropped into all this molten metal. They are going to erupt. And so uh, we ended up in this facility. We had batteries hitting the ceiling. I mean, 35 feet up in this facility uh, because they were exploding. We call them spinners because they look like 4th of July firework spinners. And we had them zinging all over the place. I, I encourage you to watch. Um, it's new on our, on our training and resources page. There's a video that shows some testing that we've done. And it's the second half of that of that video but very interesting i mean to the point that we actually there's so many jet flames bursting out of the bottom of that thing that we actually ruined the concrete in this facility as well i mean we put like an inch inch and a half pit uh, into his concrete so it is a different monster when you allow free oxygen i'm just going to tell you that 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 is if i had to choose between a water response and a blanket response i would go with the blanket response every time now the facility director like I said, he came and worked our booth because he was so impressed with the process, but he says it needs to be a one-two punch. We need to have the blanket and the, the water response uh, to really have some assurance that you've knocked down the event and that you're not gonna end up having uh, multiple events you know, on your way to the impound yard or, or the uh, isolation yard. But anyway, so let me walk you through real quick the difference between Brimstone and, and some of our competitors. Uh, one of the first things you'll notice with our bags or our blankets is that Everybody else, you, they they put they they've got some high heat materials. They sew some handles on the corner. They put it in a big rubber bag, and then you know, so the firefighter first of all has to dump it out. And I will say that some of our competitors roll their blankets intelligently. Some of them not so much. I mean, you 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 dump out this blanket on the ground. You got to figure out how to unfold it. It's not done in an intelligent way for a quick deployment. You've really got to unfold it and figure it out as you go. Uh, with us, not the case. Uh, first of all. We have great instructions and deployment methods right here on our on our uh, instruction card. There's even a, a QR code that you can scan that will take you to all of our videos and training resources on the website. Uh, we've developed a method called poll, like the pass method on a, on a handheld. It's just a quick visual cue to help you remember how to deploy the blanket. Um, our bag, you don't have to dump on, I mean, you don't have to dump our blanket out of the bag. You lay the bag on the ground and we even tell you how to do it. I mean, I'm not sure how well you can see it, but we've got a, a sign that says center on threat, this side up, and there's an arrow pointing. So you, you literally center the arrow on the thread of the vehicle about 10 feet away from the vehicle, and you open the bag. Uh, we've got a drag pad also, just real quick before I open her up. There's a drag pad on this end, so if one firefighter wants to respond and doesn't want to carry a 60 or 90 pound blanket, depending on which size you order, they can grab it from one end and drag it along the ground, no problem. We had a little girl that I bet she weighs 90 pounds that can drag this blanket without too much trouble. So, but we also include handles on each end for two man deploy. Um, but anyway, so a firefighter, you lay this on the ground, center it on threat. The firefighter opens it. I mean, literally you just have to open the zippers to the corner and you pull it the rest of the way. The zippers are very friendly. And what you have then is a double roll blanket here. So half of the blanket's gonna roll that way. The firefighter can grab one of these straps and walk it back. You have to be careful. It's not like you can just rip it and it'll roll. I mean, it does take a little bit of finesse, admittedly, but with a little bit of training, you do it a couple times, it's, it's, it's very easy. We do it all the time now. We've gotten quite good at it. So one firefighter grabs one strap, the other firefighter grabs the other strap. They walk away from each other. The blanket unrolls in such a way that it's very obvious how it gets uh, deployed onto the vehicle. You toss this strap to the side, and the great thing about that strap is that this is para-aramid. Uh, it actually won't melt or burn. And so that strap becomes a full vehicle harness. Obviously, this is a miniature version of it, but it becomes a whole vehicle harness uh, that you can, or har a cinch rather, that you can wrap around the base of the vehicle on a high wind day, or you know, we recommend that you actually send the blanket on the vehicle on the wrecker. And so this is just another way of securing that blanket around the vehicle when it's on its way to the impound or isolation yard. So uh, that's another thing that sets us apart. So um, we've got, uh, another really big feature for our blankets is we're the only ones on the market, at least to date. Um, I know we were the first of the market with this. Um, uh, I, I don't know if anybody's copied us yet or not. We do have patents pending, so hopefully they'd have a harder time doing that than they think. But anyway, so extendable poles. These are, um, for instance, that same little girl that was able to drag this bag. She's five foot three, and she had no trouble getting the blanket over top of a of an eight foot tall uh, forklift. So I couldn't get it over top of an eight foot forklift. You probably couldn't either without the extendable poles. 
And for that matter, what's, what are you going to do if you've got an SUV? I mean, EV SUVs are out there and more and more of them are becoming available. Um, so that will very likely be a reality in the future that you guys may have to face. So how are you going to get it over top of that SUV, especially if it has a roof rack or a you know, cargo carrier on top? Uh, you're not going to do it without the poles. So the poles are very important and we're the only ones that have them. So, um, so I'll just, this is a, just a, a small blanket sample, but we also uh, feature center lines on our blankets, high visibility. They actually uh, have reflective uh, material on them. So at night they shine in the lights, um, light colored blanket because we want it to be highly visible at nighttime for nighttime deployments. Uh, we offer a two man or excuse me, a two handle uh, strap at each corner. I mean, if it's a high wind day or I've noticed too, like when vehicles are wet, it's, it's a little trickier getting the, getting the blanket over top of it. So this just gives you a really good purchase in order to get the blanket over top of the vehicle without too much trouble. Um, you know, I don't know if I pointed out the harness points, but really strong, folded over, easy to connect to harness points. Um, so yeah, that's the blanket in a nutshell. I think I've covered all the bases on the blanket. Um, let's see, let me get this out of the way real quick. So that leads me, uh, that leads me to our next component to what we call a full EV solution. In other words, you can use the blanket by yourself. And like I said, if I had to choose between a water response and a blanket response, Based on what we've seen, I would go with the blanket response every time. You got to get rid of that, that, uh, uh, that free oxygen. Which also, before I segue into the Mister, ground seal is everything. So whatever you do, whoever's blanket you buy, I highly recommend that you make sure you've got at least three feet of ground seal around the entire base of the vehicle. Um, a lot of our competitors, their extra large version is only 20 feet wide. We've got aerial views of a 20 foot wide uh, blanket versus our blanket that shows you the difference. The, the 20 foot wide only has about a foot of uh, ground seal. Any kind of heat wafting out is gonna lift that one foot and uh, you're gonna wind up with more oxygen getting under there and again, you're gonna have a much more exciting event um, uh, with uh, a 20 foot wide blanket than you would with a 25 foot. So that's again, when I say that, I mean that in reference to uh, like responding to a van or an SUV. Uh, you gotta have that ground seal. I mean, it doesn't matter which vehicle. I'm saying the 25 foot wide blanket is what you need in response to a truck or, or the, the SUV. So uh, anyway, so let's move on. Um, uh, this is our, I'm very proud of this. This is uh, uh, our lead engineer. This is his brainchild. Um, I mean, we've all contributed to it, but you know, it was his idea to use the science um, that he knew uh, that um, for cooling, that, that really the, the trick in fighting an EV fire or, you know, I mean, a fire where there's metal involved is to overcome the steam conversion rate. And so all of these products out there that are 60, 150, almost, I mean, up to 600 gallons now, um, most of that water is not being utilized. It's literally just being wasted because it's, it's really the conversion of steam that's gonna take, the, that's gonna draw the heat out of the metal. And so underneath an EV, there is no residency. That water has nowhere to permeate into. So it's literally just bouncing off before it even does any good. We've, we've proven in the lab, like I said, with those tests that we did, um, that 10 gallons per minute, we also actually did some torch tests as well. And those videos are on our website where we, we, we used our Tesla S bed. We actually laid some metal plates in the test bed um, that uh, steel plates so that they could actually really hold heat and we torched them i can't remember what temperatures we used my we do have reports that we can share uh, that that give some details again we had thermal couples all over the place monitoring the temperatures we did it with our 10 gallon per minute underneath the s bed shooting up uh, we did it with a 60 gallon per minute competitor and 150 gallon per minute competitor and uh, we, we absolutely competed. Uh, we were comparable in every way with them. In fact, I would say on the, we did five inch clearance, uh, like, a, like a typical sedan, uh, uh, eight inch clearance, and then a 15 inch clearance, which is the Cybertruck. That's the highest clearance, I think, on the market right now for EVs. And so we wanted to see what would happen with us and our competitors based on temperatures, based on those torches, blasting that metal, uh, to see who would uh, cool most effectively or would we all be comparable and it turns out we're all comparable in fact on the 15 inch tall we were actually a little bit better because 
the the other guys they they're trying to get that mass coverage and so they're they're spreading out all over the place and most of their water isn't even touching the bottom of the vehicle it's it's actually shooting out before it even touches the bottom so that's one of the benefits of going with a with a mister uh, our mist is a true firefighting mist it's less than a thousand microns um, you only need a hundred pounds at the nozzle of pressure to get your ten gallons per minute um, so uh, with it being a mist, you control the environment with the blanket. So you don't have to worry about you know, that, that, that steam escaping. It's all just building up and billowing underneath uh, the vehicle, underneath the blanket. And um, it's overcoming that steam conversion rate. Uh, because we use that micro mist, uh, if, you, if, you know your home, if, you, if you know your science, um, uh, a, a less than 1,000 micron droplet size can actually inert and, and, and dampen or knock down hydrogen gas. And so um, we, uh, we're not saying that you won't have vapor cloud ignitions. In fact, we did have one, but I would say it was, it was a mild vapor cloud ignition compared to some of the others we saw without the, the mister running. Again, that side of the blanket just kind of lifts, it burps out some flame and it settles right back down. Uh, but yeah, we had a reduction in temperature by 34% over a very short period of time. And we actually, you know, I said we were doing three modules. We would get the first module fully engulfed. It would, uh, we would then respond. So it would be, you know, like at least 25% or so or more even into the module. I mean, to where we had flame shooting all over again, videos on the website. Uh, the firefighters would first respond with the blanket inside that facility. And again, within 80, within 80 seconds, there was no visible flaming underneath the blanket. Uh, and then we would we would simulate like another firefighter was putting together the mister. So we would wait a minute or two before we'd respond underneath the blanket. Uh, but then, so the blanket in place, free oxygen is gone. We gently lift the blanket on the one edge and and shove the mister in. It goes in, and uh, um, we actually stopped the propagation of thermal runaways. Um, on one test we did, we stopped it before it even got to the second module. So um, it, the first module was fully engulfed. We responded, and it never made it. Um, with the blanket and mister together, it never propagated to the second module. On the third, or the, on the on the next test that we did, that was similar to that. Uh, it did propagate to the second module, but it never made it to the third. So we have knocked it down. Uh, in fact, my guys, the firefighting facility director, even says that that he doesn't think you need more than blanket and mister running more than 30 minutes. So our 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 claim to fame, if you will, is that we think that a 500 gallon truck. A fire, two, two or three firefighters, our blanket and a mister is all you need to resolve an EV thermal runaway. It is not the monster that everybody makes them out to be. They are completely tameable. Um, yeah, so um, I don't know what else to say except, you know, I mean, we are very technical. We love to talk about our products. We love to talk about the science. If you need help, if you want us to help you dispel any of the illusions, if you want to know what we may be, you know, in, in all of our handling and dealing and, and even, you know, we, we still consult with the with that facility. They help us all the time. Uh, if you need some best practices, uh, we can walk you through that. I should point out real quick that we are the only uh, firefighter lug on the market for our for our pipe connections. And there's actually two more pipe seconds sections. So this is 92 inches in length total. There's great videos of the firefighters getting it underneath the vehicle on our website. Um, so uh, firefighter lugs. Uh, we have a universal, always active swivel, so even under pressure, uh, that's working. It's just a, a, a twist on and off, shut off valve, standard NH hose threads. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, this thing weighs eight pounds. Just the head by itself <laughs> weighs eight pounds, so that thing is not going to tip. You don't have to worry about that. It's, it's, it's made out of solid, solid aluminum. Uh, it's only got a two and... Two, uh, two and a quarter inch uh, uh, clearance, very low profile. So even if you have a vehicle that's got a flat tire, more than likely you're gonna be able to get this in there. Ours is omnidirectional, it's more of a dome shape, so it doesn't matter where you put it in at. You don't have to put it in from the side, you can put it in from the front, you can put it in from any angle and you're gonna be able to uh, uh, get the results that you want. So uh, yeah, I think that's it. Oh, well, I can walk you through the case real quick. I do show this on our, our how to assemble video. Uh, it's a lot more professional than what I'm doing here, but yeah. So this is just a, a hard case that we throw in the, the case. I believe we have the best case on the market as well. Very easy, very intuitive to respond. You get it out really quick. It's easy to put away. You don't have to think about what you're doing, where what goes. Everything is very obvious. 
Uh, but anyway, so we include this hard case. Um, if you want to include an extra filter, we do have an inline filter that we recommend you, you clean out after every use. Um, that's very easy to do, and we just want to protect our nozzles. That's why we do that. Um, so yeah, you can include extra um, filter, extra washers if you want. We even There's even room in here for some small spanner wrenches if you want. None of those things come with it. The hard case does come with it, so if you want to add those things to your kit, you can. Uh, but yeah, our, 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 we have a great kit and, and includes uh, great instructions on, on how to deploy, uh, best practices, uh, how to assemble. That's all right there on the card. Again, there's a QR code on that card that takes you right to our training resources. I should also say that Brimstone Fire Protection, um, uh, I started selling bags in 2016 into the aerospace industry. I'm very proud to say I actually have stuff that I've designed that's, that's up on the International Space Station. Um, but yeah, we also do the, the fire containment bags, smoke containment bags. Um, we've partnered with a development partner and we will be the first on the market with a UL5800. I just want to thank you very much for uh, listening to my spiel here. And, and please, like I said, if you have any questions, don't, don't be a stranger. Give us a call. Uh, we'd love to help you guys figure, figure it out. It's, 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 this is completely manageable. You can do it. I promise. If you're nervous about it, don't be. We can help. Thank you.